right guys, so next installment in my 300 Blackout Gel Block Test Series um, is the Nosler Varmageddon 110 grain. So get you a good look at this thing. This is a this is a wicked little beast right here. Uh, this is 110 grain, full metal jacket, ballistic tip, but the jacket is it's all copper, but it's a very thin skin jacket of bullet, and this thing is designed to literally pretty much explode upon the impact. Uh, it's for varmint, small gang, coyote size stuff, and down, uh, it would really wreak havoc on bigger targets as well. Uh, maybe not ethical for, for deer hunting or something like that, it's a bigger game, uh, but you know, uh, if you've got some two-legged menace, uh, this would be a, a showstopper uh, in, in multiple ways. So, uh, so let's get turned around here and take a look at the loading for this one. Okay, so once again, as in most of my, my supersonic loadings, uh, I'm using a little gun. Yeah, here's a quick look at the uh, the bullet. That was a Farmageddon, 30 caliber, 110 grain. It's a flat base uh, tip bullet. Uh, again, uh, pretty much standard for all my 300 blackout loads is uh, the CCI uh, number 400 small rifle primers. And uh, of course, Starline Brass. And I uh, always give a big shout out to Starline Brass. And here's another look at the loaded around here. So you can see that uh, the, the base of that bullet is down just about to where the neck stops down here. And uh, this bullet tip is just a little bit different. If you can see that, it's got a few silver flecks in it, which uh, is one of the ways to tell if it's a Varmageddon. Uh, I also load some of these Varmageddon bullets in, uh, in a 22 caliber 223 loading and uh, get similar results from there as well. So. All right, guys, let's get turned around here and, and take a look at the video. All right, guys, so uh, next up, we're going to be doing the, uh, the Nosler 110 grain Barmageddon. On the previous video, when I, I tested these, they were running well over 2,500 foot per second. So that was out of the, the single shot CBA Scout takedown. So I'm curious to see how the velocities match up. Uh, I'll have slides at the end of the video that actually show the velocity difference between uh, this POF USA 16 inch AR-15 uh, gas impingement rifle uh, versus the CVA Scout uh, takedown uh, single shot breakdown gun. So um, I'm curious to see what the velocity differences there are as well. So uh, let's get into this. So once again, the Garmin's been doing better with me shooting directly over top of it. <clears throat> All right, velocity of 2467. And I can see some major catastrophic damage, even from here with that single shot. Let's go down and check it out. All right, guys, and just about what I expected right here. So, uh, about, about an inch in, we've got massive expansion already started. Uh, we've got a, a massive temporary wound cavity here, extending out to about five and a half or six inches. Uh, at an inch and a half in, we have copper fragments. Uh, at four inches in, we've got lead fragments, actually from four inches all the way down to about eight inches. Uh, we've got, at nine inches, we got some more jacket shed. And finally, we've got what's left of this bullet left in here right at 10 inches. So uh, absolutely exactly what this bullet was designed to do. This is the Nosler Varmageddon. Uh, it's a varmint grenade. It's made to fully expand and dump all of its energy in small, uh, small game uh, varmints and, uh, and small predators and stuff. So uh, just, absolutely impressive results here here's the the plug 
actually it blew this plug out of the side of there that was from where i had pulled out one of the other bullets earlier and uh all right so let's get turned around i'm going to do one more of these i'll try to get it farther over here in the back see if we can get a separate wound channel on it all right guys round two of the nozzler of armageddon Did get velocity again at 24 25. Let's go ahead and put another one of these into the backstop. So we'll have a <coughs> three velocities to average this out here. session there and let's go take a look I'm expecting more of exactly what we had on the first round and I'm not disappointed so from the other side on this one. These two wound channels look very similar. We may have kept a little bit more of our weight. I don't see as much lead shed as early as in the other bullet. Uh, here's what's left of that one. Looks like it carried out to about 11 and a half inches what was left of it. Uh, major, major chunks of lead scattered all the way down through there. Looks like the uh, polymer tip is probably right here. And uh, guys, just, uh, it's just a, a testament to what this bullet was designed to do. You know, it was designed to basically explode upon the impact. And uh, that's exactly what it's doing here. You can look down through here and see all the lead shards scattered out just from those two rounds. This is why I waited to last to shoot this one because I knew there was no way I could clean this out of the gel block. Uh, this is all gonna have to come out whenever I heat this up next time and, and remold it. So uh, let me let me see if I can get a couple of the bigger chunks dug out and I'll get a couple of pictures of those and then we'll wrap up. All right guys, so this is all we had left on the, the Nosler 110 Barmageddon's. Uh, I do have some lead still bonded to the copper jacket in this bullet, but this one here, uh, the biggest piece I could reach in there and pull out was just jacket. Uh, it had shed all of its lead uh, up to that point. And actually when I pulled this out, uh, the, the two pieces came out stuck together by some of the gel block. So, you know, just, uh, this is not what you want if you're gonna be planning on eating your game because you're gonna have lead, lots and lots of lead scattered out through the meat. So. This is a, not a good hunting bullet for, uh, for consumption type meat. Uh, it is a perfect hunting style bullet for anything Cody size and smaller uh, because it's gonna bleed. It's gonna explode completely or it's gonna bleed out really quick, so. All right, guys, we'll uh, have some still pictures. We'll have chronograph data and comparisons between the AR-15 velocities and the CVA Scout takedown velocities from the previous range outing. And that's all coming up, so stay tuned. That's so, right, guys, uh, here's the results. So, uh, like I said, I fired two of these and they did pretty much what they're advertised to do. These things exploded literally within about an inch. They had opened up and within about three inches they had fragmented and all these little pieces were driving into the gel block in every direction. Um, you know, the biggest single chunk I pulled out was this one. 
from one bullet. This was some jacket from the other bullet. And, uh, you know, what's missing the lead from this one and, and the lead from this one is all in these little pieces and parts right here. Uh, this is most of them. There was a few, I think, that I missed. Uh, polymer tips, you know, recovered uh, chunks of the polymer tip, most of the polymer tip for one and chunks of the polymer tip for, for one of the other ones. Uh, the rest of the pieces of that polymer tip are still in my gel block. Now, this is one of the blocks that I melted down last night to reset. All these little black flecks in here pretty much are pieces of the ballistic tip, either from these two ballistic tips from the Barmageddon's or maybe some pieces even from the, the Barnes Tac TX. But there was four rounds with black ballistic tips and, and all these chunks in here are the remnants of those four ballistic tips. So uh, anyway, All right, guys. So, like I said on the intro, this is a this is a, a wicked little round right here. I mean, this this thing was designed by Nosler uh, to do just exactly what you saw it do in the video here. Uh, massive, rapid expansion and a, a pretty much explosion. Um, Hornady's V Max uh, gives similar results as well in their 110 grain uh, V Max bullet. So, you know, both of them are really good options in 300 blackout. The only drawback I have against this bullet is where it's flat base. It is harder to load in a rifle round. Um, you you almost need to flare the neck on, the, on a rifle case. Um, and I do actually have a, um, a universal flaring die to, to do these. Uh, most of the time, if I, if I do a good inside uh, camper on these, I can get these flat base bullets to seat in here with no issues in the 30 cal. In the 22 caliber bullet, the flat bases are a little bit tougher to get seated in. Uh, they almost need a really heavy, like a VLD inside neck camper uh, to get them started in, or they need some, a little bit of flare put into them. So that's the only drawback against the Barmageddon and the VMAX bullets uh, that I've personally experienced over, over the years of loading both of them. And, uh, but like I said, this, this thing performs right up to where it's designed to perform to. Uh, the velocities don't hurt. <laughs> you know, this is some some very nice velocity for a 300 blackout loading. Uh, you know, I'd gone back and checked my brass after the fact, checked the primers. I didn't have any overpressure signs at that loading. Uh, I would be a little more cautious. I know I'm close to topping loading on that. If I get out on a really hot 9,500 degree day, uh, you know, the pressure indications may change a little bit, especially if that ammo gets left out and then it's heated up quite a bit before you're shooting it. So if you do load up, to those velocities, you know, just proceed with caution and be aware that, you know, you can gain multiple feet per second uh, based on ambient temperature on the day that you're shooting at. So, uh, but, so all right guys, if you got any questions or feedback on this particular bullet, would love to see those in the comments over here. And, uh, you know, we'll we'll hash through those and, 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 you know, maybe some more stories if you guys have actually used this uh, on small game and the results that you get. So looking forward to those. As always, thanks for watching, and uh, please hit that like and subscribe button if you haven't already. Turn on notifications. Uh, this is one of maybe six different videos from from this set that I've done, uh, 300 black testing in gel block. And, uh, you know, if you haven't already, uh, there's probably a link at the end of this video to go to one of those. If not, go back into my, my, my feed at my channel and then check out the other 300 black uh, ballistic gel tests that I've done and the other loadings, some pretty interesting results in those. So, as always, guys, Thanks for watching and we'll catch you on the next one.